your vagina just feels like it's on fire it's itchy maybe the lips are sore you can't sit down properly and then on top of that you have this white discharge if you've got some or all of these symptoms then you've probably got it comes as a cream a vaginal pessary and then it also comes as an oral tablet Hi ladies, I'm Dr. Simi, former surgeon, current GP and cosmetic doctor. Welcome to my channel where we discuss all things skin and women's health. In this video, we're going to talk about vaginal thrush, otherwise known as a vaginal yeast infection. We're going to talk about what vaginal thrush is, why do you get it in the first place, how do you treat it, how do you prevent it, and then I'll also tell you when it's just time to go and see your doctor. So if you've got vaginal thrush, don't be embarrassed because I find that when I diagnose women with vaginal thrush, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I keep myself clean. I don't sleep around. And I'm just like, calm down. It's just thrush. And actually, welcome to the club because 75% of women will have at least one episode in their lifetime. So thrush is one of those things that's common. And as women, we shouldn't be embarrassed. It's not necessarily because you've done anything wrong. It's not necessarily because of your sexual practices or preferences. So thrush, which is a vaginal fungal infection, is caused by the yeast candida. The candida is actually a family of yeasts and there are different members that make up this family. So you know how I love introducing you to microorganisms. Well, say hello to Candida albicans, who is the most popular member of this family because she causes about 80 to 90% of vaginal thrush. Some of you may already be familiar with Candida albicans because it may be living in your vagina already. Yes, you heard me right because about 10 to 20% of women just carry Candida albicans naturally in their vagina. It doesn't cause any problems. It's just part of the normal vaginal environment along with the healthy bacteria that's there and it's not really causing any symptoms. So how do you know if you've got thrush? So I'm going to tell you about five of the more common symptoms that women have if they've got thrush. So the first symptom is the itch. The itching happens around the vulva so remember that it's not your vagina that itches, your vagina is the muscular tube that's inside your body, it's internal, it's the external parts that tend to itch. I'm talking about the labia which are the lips, the outer lips, the inner lips, sometimes the area between the anus and the vagina itself, that area there, it's called the perineum, that can be itchy as well. Not everyone gets the itch, but if you get it, it can be intense. Some women try to manage it by what I call the thrush dance. So this is when you kind of have this wriggle and you're trying to get some friction going on down there just to try to prevent you having to scratch it because it's so itchy and you only really have the thrush dance when you're in public because you know that if you're by yourself you're just going to reach right in and you're going to scratch it comment down below if you can relate to this or if you know what i'm talking about but on a serious note the itching can be so intense and it can affect your concentration it can affect work and school and you know you don't look ill and it's not the kind of thing that you want to start telling people when they're asking you what's wrong and why you're pacing up and down the room and you can't sit down you know you can't be like i've got thrush you're just like no i'm fine i'm fine so you know i have a lot of sympathy for women when you have thrush i know it can be uncomfortable the next symptom is the discharge so there are three types of discharge that you can get so first of all you can have no discharge so it is possible to have thrush and not to see any discharge but what can sometimes happen is that when I examine a woman who has thrush or who I suspect has thrush but she doesn't have a discharge, when I pass the speculum in and I have a look inside, I can see that there is a little bit of discharge there that's just coating the vaginal walls but probably it's not enough that it's going to come out in the knickers. So that's the first type of discharge, none. You know how us doctors like to compare things to food? Well, the second type of discharge that you can have looks like double cream. It's kind of white and smooth and a little bit thick. The third type of discharge is that classic cottage cheese discharge, which is a blend between smooth and lumpy. And you'll have seen me describe that in my video, which you can watch here about the different colors and different types of vaginal discharge. So the discharge usually doesn't have a smell. If it does have a smell, it's just very, very faint. It's not offensive. The next symptom is the soreness. The mucosa of the vagina and the vulva can become really kind of irritated and red and raw. Sometimes the lips are swollen and you can get little fissures which are like cracks in the skin and it can be really uncomfortable to sit down to wipe yourself when you go to the toilet 
It can also cause dysuria, which is pain when you're passing urine. So classically, we associate dysuria with having a urine infection. But when you have thrush, sometimes if the inner lips are involved, when the urine touches that, oh my gosh, it burns. And if you tell your doctor, oh, when I pass urine, it burns, they may automatically think of a urine infection as opposed to thrush and therefore give you a prescription for antibiotics. Well, guess what happens if you have a prescription for antibiotics when you have thrush? Wiping out the good bacteria and the bad bacteria in the vagina and then giving that thrush the opportunity to grow. It's like it flares up and the thrush is worse. And then your doctor will probably be like, oh, OK, it was thrush all along. So that's something to be aware of. When that vulva is sore and inflamed, you can imagine that it's also quite painful to have sex. So thrush can cause superficial dyspareunia, which means painful sex. It's painful right at the start of penetration, just when the penis is about to enter the vagina. So I've made a full video about painful sex, which you can watch here, and I discuss all of the different causes of superficial dyspareunia. None of these symptoms by themselves will 100% tell you that you've got thrush. As doctors, we will usually diagnose diagnose this based on the symptoms that you're describing and what we might see when we do a speculum examination. We can take swabs as well to send off to the lab to see if we can grow that candida yeast. If you are kind of treating thrush by yourself, there are some home testing kits that you can get. You would insert this testing kit into the vagina and you look for the change in colour. And then the change in colour will tell you whether your vaginal pH is normal, which is more likely in thrush, or whether it's raised, which is more likely in conditions such as bacterial vaginosis or um, trichomoniasis. I'm not against you buying these. Um, if you think that it would be helpful, then, you know, I don't have anything against them. I just think that they're not absolutely necessary. So why do you get thrush? So first of all, it's not a sexually transmitted infection because you can have thrush if you've never had sex or if you're not having sex. And actually yeast is present in small numbers all over our body. It's on our skin. It's on our mucous membrane. A mucous membrane is that kind of pink lining that lines the inside of our nose and inside of our mouth and inside the vagina. So it's present there in low numbers. It doesn't cause any harm, it's just getting on with its life. But it is what you call an opportunistic microorganism. So that means that if you provide it with the right conditions, it will overgrow. The way I like to describe this is if you think about baking bread, we use yeast to allow the bread to rise. And in order for that yeast to thrive, you have to keep it in a moist and a warm environment. It's similar with thrush because the vagina is the perfect environment for that yeast to thrive because your vagina is warm and it's moist. So if we throw in some other conditions, then we can pretty much bake ourselves a yeast infection. So these other conditions are things like a change in the pH of the vagina. You can change that by using douches, vaginal deodorants, feminine hygiene wipes or antiseptic wipes. All of these change the environment of the vagina and then make the yeast more likely to overgrow. Also, if you've had a recent course of antibiotics, what can sometimes happen is that the antibiotics wipes away the good bacteria and the bad bacteria and then there's no competition anymore for the yeast and the yeast is like I'm free to grow and it will thrive and then it will give the symptoms of thrush. If you've got diabetes and your sugar levels are kind of not that well controlled, then that can also make you more likely to get thrush. And thrush is also more common in a vagina that is exposed to estrogens between that puberty and menopause. So if you've got thrush, how do you get rid of it? Well, you've got three options, no treatment, self-treatment, and then see your doctor. I know that some of you already are jumping up and down like, what? How can you say don't treat thrush if you've got it? Like, I want it gone. I typically see this in my surgery when a woman's smear test comes back. I think that's called a pap test in um, some countries. And when that comes back, it will comment on the presence of candida. So if that woman actually doesn't have any symptoms, but she does have candida present, it doesn't need treatment. Because remember that I told you that about 10 to 20% of women naturally carry candida in their vagina anyway. So you can just leave it alone. Self-treatment. So thrush is one of those conditions that you can walk into a chemist or a pharmacy and you can buy over-the-counter medication to treat yourself. If you've had thrush before, this is probably easier to do. And if it's your first time, having thrush and you're not quite sure, you might want to go for option three, which is see your doctor, but I'll come to that in a minute. Whether you should be treating yourself or seeing your doctor depends on kind of what classification of thrush that you have. So it's a little bit like relationships. So it's either complicated or it's not complicated. So the majority of women have non-complicated thrush. So that means that they've got mild or moderate symptoms. 
you're not getting it all the time, just now and again, and you're not pregnant and you're also not diabetic. So if you've got uncomplicated thrush, then you can purchase your medication over the counter. If you're going down the over the counter route, then there are three forms of anti-yeast medication that you can purchase. It comes as a cream, a vaginal pessary, and then it also comes as an oral tablet. I've said this before in my previous video on vaginal discharge, make sure that you're using the right one for the right place. The cream comes in two types, external and internal. So the external one is the one that you put around the vulva. So you can put it on the outer lips, on the inner lips, in the space between the outer and the inner lips, and also on the inside part of the inner lips. You can put it on the perineum and it helps to kind of soothe your symptoms, especially the itching. One thing that I would say though, is that it can be a little bit irritating. So when you first put it on, you might find that you have a stinging sensation, then it's much better. The internal cream you put inside the vagina. So it comes with an applicator and you, you pretty much squirt it inside the vagina. Um, it can get a little bit messy, but once you get the hang of it, then it's completely fine. One thing I need to mention about the cream is that it is oil-based. That means that if you are going to be having sex with a condom when you are having treatment, it can degrade the condom, which means that the condom could split. And then I don't need to tell you what happens after that. Or do I? <laughs> it's a baby. I did real catch that. I don't know. Maybe it's not obvious for everyone. I don't, you know, I don't want to make any assumptions. I just want to make sure I give you the right information and, you know, you feel like you know exactly what you need to do and what you should do and what you can't do. Okay, so if you use it, the condom can split, which might mean that you could get pregnant. With a vaginal pessary, you insert one pessary into the vagina at night. Some of them come with an applicator which you use to put the pessary in and some just come as a pessary and you have to put it in with your finger. And the instructions usually tell you to do it at night because when you put it in, it kind of dissolves and it goes a little bit messy and gooey. And if you were to put it in during the day and you're walking around, then it's just going to be dripping out and it, it's just a messy situation. So it's easier to put it in at night when you're going to be asleep and lying flat and you can just leave it in and let it do its job. And then the final option is the tablet just one tablet as a single dose and then you can just carry on with your life and usually your symptoms will improve within a week or two. The tablet though is not suitable for all women because you can't take it if you are pregnant. You have to stick to the other two forms so that would be the cream or the pessary. And no matter what antifungal medication that you use, if your symptoms are still present after two weeks, then just go and see your doctor anyway. One of the questions I get when I talk about medication for treating thrush is that, do I need to get some medication for my partner as well? It is possible to transfer candida from your vagina to your partner's genitals. But remember also that I told you that candida lives on our skin, lives on our mucous membranes in low numbers anyway. So if your partner's not having any symptoms, then we don't necessarily have to treat. If you have complicated thrush, so that means you've got severe symptoms. But generally we would say you've got severe thrush if the vulva is red and inflamed and it's particularly swollen. Sometimes the clitoris is swollen. If you've got like fissures, which are like cuts and cracks in the skin, then this would count as having severe symptoms. Also, if you are pregnant, if you've got diabetes and your sugars are poorly controlled, or if you have a condition that weakens your immune system like cancer or HIV, I would also advise that you see your doctor first. Also, if you are under the age of 16 or over the age of 60, I would also recommend seeing your doctor because remember that thrush is less common before puberty and after the menopause because the estrogen levels are lower. If you are having symptoms of thrush for the first time, if you've treated the thrush and you've still got symptoms, again, go and see your doctor because there are lots of other conditions that can mimic thrush. And also, if you're getting recurrent thrush, so if you're having more than four episodes in 12 months, I would recommend that you see your doctor as well. How can you prevent yourself from getting thrush in the first place? So I think the first thing I'll say is that there isn't like a one size fits all women. I'm just giving you tips based on my knowledge, my training, my clinical experience of what I see that works in my patients or doesn't work. And, you know, you can use that information to decide if it works for you. The first tip is avoid using perfumed products. So perfumed soaps, perfumed um, cleansers, perfumed feminine hygiene wipes. And, you know, good old fashioned soap and water is just fine. Plain soap, unscented. 
Um, if you are already using perfumed products or scented soaps and you're not having any problems, like I said, it's just advice and it's not one size fits all. If you're using them and you're not having any problems, then you know you don't necessarily have to change your practice. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Don't douche. So douching is the practice of squirting water inside the vagina to kind of clean it out. And what this ends up doing is that it flushes out your good bacteria as well, then allow yeast to overgrow. Avoid double dipping. So what I mean by this is having anal sex and then immediately having vaginal sex because you will end up transferring certain bacteria that don't normally live in the vagina from the anus of the vagina. You can also transfer the um, yeasts that live naturally in the bowels. You can transfer those into the vagina and then you can end up with a situation where you have thrush or some sort of vaginal infection with an abnormal vaginal discharge. Wipe from front to back because if you think about the anatomy the anus is actually quite close to the vagina but if you wipe from front to back you can avoid transferring bacteria and yeast from your bowels into the vagina avoid inappropriate use of antibiotics so this is a difficult one for me to kind of explain because i don't want you to think oh my god i'm never taking antibiotics again but some women who use antibiotics find that they can develop thrush afterwards so always follow your doctor's advice about whether antibiotics are appropriate if you're somebody who suffers from recurrent episodes of thrush, you might want to think about your clothing and maybe avoiding particularly tight fitting clothes because sometimes this may be associated with kind of a moist and sweaty environment around the vagina. So you can try that and see if it helps. If you're suffering from recurrent thrush, you can also try to avoid biological washing powders. So choose non-bio instead. The difference is that with biological ones, they contain an enzyme that helps to break down the dirt. And for some women, that can be irritating around the vulva and they can find that they get less kind of discomfort by switching to non-bio. I hope that you found this video really helpful and that you kind of don't feel embarrassed if you've got thrush now that you know how common it is and make sure that you share it if you know anyone that would benefit from it. As always if you've got any questions just leave them down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them.